All right, all right, all right. Let's see if we can get this going. There we go. All right. So, welcome, everybody. Hope you guys are doing good. Do, 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 do. Tonight, we are going to be drawing feet and ankles and stuff like that. Um, let me make sure that I do that. All right. So, hi. Welcome to Sketch Night with Rodgon. Tonight we're going to be drawing feet and I'm going to be showing you guys how everything connects and I'm going to try to make it easy and understandable for you. As well, let's catch you up a little bit on what my life has been like this week. And heads up, not necessarily the best week in the world, but it's okay, it's gonna get better. So let us go into our, our drawing. Okay, so seeing as a lot of you are not into the chat yet, uh, I would like to, first of all, say thank you to everyone out there for all the support that you guys ever do. Uh, it's immensely welcomed, and I appreciate every single one of you. Dragon on Stilt is here. Howdy, how are you? Uh, I've been better, but it has been an interesting week for me uh i'm going to just draw like some legs while i talk so i'm this week my company let go our entire art department so that meant that we didn't get fired for our performance but at the same time we don't have a job anymore so it was an interesting thing. I always plan for this because this happens a lot in the art field. You know, it you end up in very precarious situations a lot because the art field is not necessarily the most stable. Be it the companies try and make some extra money by like outsourcing your work to other people or, you know, different countries sometimes. Or, you know, sometimes just art departments don't seem to be worth it for some of the people that employ us. So it's always good to make sure that you have a backup plan whenever anything like this happens. Darren Johnson, Jackson, hello, hello, Sumarella, Sumarella, you're always here, thank you so much. Hi, how's it going? Adam Blake, hi, I'm a big fan. Hey, I like you, you are awesome, I'm a big fan of you now. So. Of noogies. All right, so you know, this week learning that I didn't have my permanent, nice, comfy job was a little bit of a letdown. But you know, at the end of the day, I can either sit there and mope and complain, or I can do something with it, right? I do have money saved up, so I'm not in a precarious situation yet. And that is going to allow me to uh, to gamble on myself for once. Uh, it's been a long time since I did that. And ever since, uh, well, let's say like five years ago, I never really um, have pursued being my own boss anymore. Uh, I used to do that for a very long time. I did freelance for many, many years. And that was my main source of income for a very long time. And, you know, I kind of, kind of feeling like going back to that. Um, and, you know, trying to actually uh, push forth my academy, uh, my drawing school that I've been wanting to do forever. So, yeah, I'm gonna bet on myself this time around and we'll see what happens. Worst case scenario, I just have to get another job. You know, uh, you, uh, you run out of money and then 
you know, having to uh, start the whole process over again, right? But that's fine. You know, if I do happen to make it succeed, it's going to be a lifelong dream of being able to have my own school where I can teach people, where I can like, oof, that would be awesome. And having students that are very dedicated to, that is the one thing that I crave. I am craving people that are very, very interested in learning. You know, it's, so that is going to be the goal this year. Now, why do you see that I'm drawing feet? Well, it's because we are going to be talking about feet and how they work and how they look and how to make them look awesome and maybe take away a little bit of the intimidation that comes with drawing feet. Because feet are hated just almost as much as people hate drawing hands. I'd say almost as much, but I think hands is still an absolute winner when it comes down to hated pieces of parts to draw. All right, so I'm just warming up, just trying to get a good feel for the tablet and the pen and everything. And in a little bit, I'm going to just start doing that. So, oh, before I forget, before I forget, hold on, hold on. Something really cool happened this week, and I need to show you guys. So, one of you amazing people sent me a 3D printed version of Archie. How cool is this? How freaking cool is this? That is definitely going in the Hall of Fame right there and then there's also the another person before yeah. made this awesome grimmy jr statue from a 3d model like i need like a little shelf with all the things that people have done because you guys are awesome uh honestly it makes me so happy <laughs> okay Back to drawing. Uh, Quentin Tarantino's favorite body part. Yes, apparently. <laughs> Harley Quinn Ibex. Well, I am glad to have you on one of the streams. Let me know what you think. I'm always open to feedback. And I want to make these the best damn streams for everybody. And someone did call me out the other day for having a slightly not-so-PG-13 language. Um... I agree. I am not always aware that my audiences are necessarily not just older people. So I need to be better at that. And I do apologize for everybody out there that's uh, showing my streams and lessons to kids and then an accidental F-bomb comes off or something like that. So not necessarily something that I want to be doing. <laughs> It's just something that comes across sometimes, and I do really apologize if uh, your kiddos or something uh, hear an accidental thing. <laughs> uh, okay, John Gillen, hey, Peralta King de Brazil. Okay, so let's start on feet and legs and everything like that because we have about an hour to draw and I think we can cover a lot of ground like that. So, first things first, feet are difficult. I'm gonna put it like that. Feet are a difficult thing to grasp properly. So you have to approach it in a bunch of different ways in order to, to understand the entire shape completely. And the way that it was simplified for me when I was learning how to draw this simplifying the leg to the most extreme we're just gonna do little cylinders for legs for the first part right essentially seeing the leg as a cylinder allows you to represent the bone that goes from the knee 
down to your ankle, right? What a lot of people think is that you need to draw something underneath this. No, 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 no. You gotta realize that your bone, the bottom of that bone is kinda a good representation of where the end of your ankle is. So if you draw a little triangle shape at the bottom of your feet of the cylinder, you get a very basic foot. Very, very basic. Now, if you start making this into a 3D shape, like we talked about doing so whenever we are drawing any shape, right? The cylinder has its own dimensions. Now, this little part in the front, it's more like a, like a slipper, if you think about it like that. If you think about it like that, it's so much easier. So imagine that you just have a cylinder with a slipper. Right? If you have a cylinder with a slipper, you can draw a foot. Now, that is obviously the most basic way and like the most easy way to draw a foot. So we start seeing things in 3D, we're easily able to divide it, and then we get an actual foot. Now, how do we go about doing this and still adding more detail and such? Now, the foot is consisting of a bunch of different parts and that's what makes it difficult. So, uh, let's, let's keep on playing with the simplified version of this so you understand what I mean by this. Wherever the leg points, that's gonna be kind of where the ankle is. Imagine this is the ball joint on your ankle, the bottom part of your feet. You can rotate that down and you can rotate that up. But when you rotate it up, there is a limit unless you're very flexible. Let's straighten these out real fast. So, the angle and limitations of the foot, of the ankle, come as follows. Your ankle can only bend up and down a certain amount. Right, we have our foot. The ankle can rotate down relatively far. It's can go pretty far back down in this direction. It actually travels quite a bit when you're bending your ankle down. But when you're trying to bend your ankle up, it's very limited because your bones just literally just can't do that. So when you keep that in mind, that's going to be very important when it comes down to poses like when you're running and such. When you have a foot on the ground and you want it to have action, you either have to lift the front or you need to lift the back. Right, so we have this, the ankle, and then imagine that's like a person about to run or you can have your ankle going up. Like a person walking. Right? No. There you go. So you can have it going down. Like a person just running, touching the ground. 
or you can have the ankle rotate it up, which would mean like somebody taking a step or walking and such like that. The ankles really, they can rotate. Can they rotate? Not the knee. You know, they have a weird rotation, They go, but they can't really rotate side to side. So, but you can rotate your whole leg, which gives the representation of that. So just keep in mind, remember yourself this limitation right here too. If you have your front foot, if you want to rotate the ankle this way, you need to rotate the knee. Shoop. So that the ankle goes. So that the ankle starts going in. But that's something to worry about later. Man, do we have rotation in our ankles? I'm really trying to rotate my ankle right now. Uh, you guys should try it. Uh, let me know if you guys can actually rotate your ankles. If you guys can, then uh, I'm wrong, but I can't. Um, what's the platform you are using? I am using uh, Clip Studio. Clip Studio is a fantastic Clip Studio Paint Pro. And when you find it on sale, it's like 20 bucks. And for drawing and illustrating, it's, it's so much better than Photoshop. And it doesn't take away as much uh, processing power from the computer as well. Ulu Popo. Oh, snap. Caught you live while I'm at the gym. Whoa. Get some iron going. Urgh. Get your Iron Man. Get your pump on. Yeah. I encourage that. I'm on that same path too. So I've been learning a lot. Now, another angle that is normally really hard for people is drawing the like leg from behind. Well, if you consider that a cylinder and you only consider the front part like a slipper, that's all you really need to do. And whenever you're drawing this out right, just make sure to not connect the lines and then it'll look like a foot from behind. Kind of looks like a nose too, huh? Um, and that same look would look something like this looking from the side. Okay, so now that we have a more simplified way of seeing it, now let's uh, take it one step further. Okay. So if we have our cylinder, and we have our slipper, let's make the cylinder a little larger. Have our little slipper on our cylinder. Okay, hey, actually looks like a slipper. <laughs> but that is like the easiest way to like remember it. Um, let's see, let's make this a little smaller so it fits in the screen better. Okay. Gonna close this out. All right, so on top of that, whenever you want to get to the next level of detail, you got to take into consideration a couple of factors. We have certain points in our leg that represent key points that you can take into consideration. The first one is your kneecap. Your kneecap can be broken down into a simple little diamond, kind of like the nose that we draw. From there, the middle of the kneecap will connect to the middle of the top of the ankle. And that's normally your bone, your shin, and there is normally not a lot of fat in front of the shin. So that is a very prominently flat, edgy surface. Normally when you draw legs, that is the front part that's just nice and straight. Now, two sides of that, you have a muscle called your calf muscle. Your calf muscle 
is going to stick out a little bit from behind depending on how big your leg is or how like defined you have your legs and it's also going to be on both sides of the cylinder right so we have a little bit here it comes up from the back so it's roughly this shape from behind so it wraps around your leg, right? So you're gonna have that, and then we're gonna have the connection to your ankle. The connection to the ankle, the easiest way to go about thinking about it is to think about it like a mannequin. Take the front line, that's gonna be the midpoint of your curve. gonna go around and imagine it has like a little little pin or something going through it since we're imagining things in 3d I want you guys to start imagining objects through objects you got to see be able to start visualizing the front and the back of each one of these shapes if you want to eventually be able to draw even better this is a fantastic exercise that you can do and it's a really good body part to do it to this same interlocking system that i like to envision it's going to just be something that allows you to visualize the leg rotating front and side right so if you see it as a simple mannequin it's going to very easily give you the limitations that you can because if you try to rotate this up let's do it up here that same pin now if you try to rotate this up this would eventually hit the top part so you can only rotate it up so far before it hits and that's how you also uh, can visualize the limitations of how far you can put your leg so now that we have our connection now we're going into the nitty gritty of the actual foot. I like to divide my foot into three different parts. I like to divide the toes. I like to divide the bridge. And then the heel. This is when I want to start drawing a slightly more complex shape. The heel doesn't really stick out really far away from your bone, uh, from your like cylinder or device. Uh, I used to make the mistake of always trying to draw my ankles really far back and out, but my drawings didn't really look all that great because of it. So I just kind of angle it out a little bit, but it's not really something that happens much. Okay. So now that we have that, have our division within these three little divisions we're gonna leave this one alone so we're not gonna touch that one it really doesn't have a need to be uh, divided or anything anymore and this midsection is gonna be where we have the arch of our foot now this can be if you are only drawing like shoes then you can use use that as your guideline for the soles but if you're just drawing basic feet they're always going to have a little bit of an arc even if it's not very prominent the bottom of your foot will have a slight arch to it you do that in the midsection the midsection is going to be the most flexible part i'm looking at my feet 
and that's really that and this one bends a little bit and then your toes bend a little more so both of these sections have a tiny bit of movement that you can individualize but again these are connected very very loosely you can move your your toes up without moving your mid of your foot up and you can do the same thing you can rotate this and not move your toes so each one of those parts has a little bit of movement that you can individualize and when we start visualing a 3d object it would be more akin of something like Okay. Now, let's say we get past this area and we want to detail it even more. We want toes and we want um, everything else like that. So we're going to take this one. We're going to ghost this one. And now we're going to go in and do a little bit more detail work. Now, you don't see every single muscle when you're drawing. Uh, you just see the most accented parts of the muscle. In this case, you would see a little bit of the calf. Then you would dig into the ankle. The ankle would show a little bit of your ankle bone and then go into your heel. From the front, you'd see a little bit of the kneecap you'd go into an indication of the midsection, which you'd just be a little tiny thin line into the other side of the leg that would be still visible. And if your calf is thick enough or big enough, you'd see a little bit of it there. On this side, you'd probably just see like a line. The ankle bone, depending on how wide or how prominent it is, you can draw a little line or not. And then from here, you go into the crease that happens with your foot. I like to indicate a tiny little minuscule line right there, just in order for myself to have that reference point going into the bridge of your foot, which curves down into the toes. You also get a little bit of a overlap in the front of the in the bottom of the foot if you want to create a little bit more depth and then you go into your toes and that's the reason that seeing things in 3d shapes is going to be immensely helpful in this situation because you already have everything subdivided you just need to add shapes on top of these guys so in order to add a pinky toe i'm just going to make a little bean bag shape In order to make the other four toes, I'm gonna do the same thing. Just gather them all together. And then for the toe, the toe tends to stick out a little bit more, but it's still like a box. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> that person has like caveman feet. Okay, let me move that up. Let me zoom in a little bit because um, I don't know. Okay, there you go. So when you're going into our toes, you got to consider that those um, have a little bit less movement than your normal digits. Uh, I would consider them, even though they still have three joints, I believe, I would just consider them as two joints. So going up a little bit and then down, up a little bit and down, up a little bit and then down, and then back into your foot. That's one, two, three. And little toes kind of like squeeze together and stuff, you know, like your toes just literally like squish like little beans on front of your foot. And then we have the big toe which in just a general sense is literally just a shape like that but 
since we're going into more detail, it actually gets pushed down by the first bone. You normally have like a bigger knuckle for your toe. And it just goes down like that. So the toes are these shapes like this. This is the general shape of a toe. But the bottom part's a little bit less. And then you have your nail right there. Then you have your other toe, which is another little bean bag shape. And then you have your other toe. It's another bean bag shape. And then you have your big toe, which is another differently shaped beanbag shape, but it's still a beanbag shape. Right? So I just like imagining them like stubby toes, uh, stubby fingers. And it tends to look okay. Nobody really focuses on how you draw toes, especially if you're doing cartooning. So don't stress too much about the toes. Just make them uh, not look weird. <laughs> like if you... Uh, like if you drew one that was like super long and then the other one's short, that'd look a little weird. So just try to keep them as little consistent beanies, like bean shapes, and then you'll be fine. When you're looking at it from behind, the calf muscle would be there. You'd see a little indication of the muscle going down into your ankle, your ankle bones, the back of your ankle, and then you'd see a little bit of everything else. Like that. More or less. These would be ankle overlap into toes. Uh, this one, you'd see toes up here, so let's start with the big toe. Make an indication for the little ones. Create that little overlap going into the heel, going into the ankle, and then just dragging that out. That angle is always weird to me, but it's actually a doable thing. So. I just don't know how far up like your ankle would have to go to. You'd create like a bunch of little overlap you right said there. Uh, let's read some comments. Okay, so Zoomarella, Zoomarella, feet and hands are the hardest to draw for me. Well, hopefully after today, it won't be that hard for you to draw feet. Uh, Gustavo Kotovitz, what's the platform you're using? Clip Studio? Oh, snap, you caught me live, yeah. Uh, trying to get buff like you. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm trying to get there without taking uh, supplements or anything like that. So uh, I want to get big enough so I can um, cosplay a lot of really cool buff characters. Uh, tunes. Raga, what up? Uh, how have you been? Uh, like I said at the beginning of the broadcast, I've been better, but I'm not doing bad. So... Now let's see how we can apply the same concepts to different feet. How about that? Okay, so we have back our drawing area. It's a little too low, that's it. Okay, cool. Now, if we want to apply this concept to different animals or different ways of drawing feet, or it's Eh, relatively easy as long as you start with the concept of the cylinder into the stepper and then just see the feet and the toes in the same way dividing them in the same manner the same manner I thought the other one you can come up with some really cool 
shapes that don't necessarily have to match human anatomy. It could be an elephant or a rhino. I don't know if rhinos have a arches to their legs, but you can have that. Uh, same concept would happen with birds. Only you would add like a talon instead of a heel. Yeah. Um, cylinder into like a fuzzy, fuzzy paws. So it would look like. So it could be like a tiger or a lion or something like that. So the moment that you start able to see things simplified, it becomes very easy. Let's say you want a horse. Yeah. Or maybe a zebra. Yeah. So the concept applies very easily in different ways, shapes, or forms. Um, you can even apply that to hands, honestly. And then just do the same concept. <laughs> and then you can just draw hands like that as well. <laughs> like, once you start understanding a little bit of how the, the shapes get put together in a body, a lot of the same motions in the hand happen in the feet, in, in the fingers, in the toes, in your limbs. You know, everything starts kind of blending in together and it becomes interesting what you can do with that information you know going in and starting to uh, get into crazy angles for like comic books and superheroes and you know stuff like that it normally takes a better understanding of perspective and I know that I just keep on repeating over and over, like, learn your perspective, learn your anatomy, learn your perspective. It really is the, the like the key to understanding everything. Uh, if you want to draw shoes, you can just draw that basic triangle shape and then draw your shoes on top of it. Um, it becomes very easy to draw shoes on anything and actually drawing shoes is it just becomes like a, a crutch because it just becomes really easy eventually to just draw that shape I particularly like uh, drawing converse type of shoes because it just becomes really, really easy. Uh, but you can draw like big, you know, like, let's say you have your normal, like a normal foot. Very super simple. Breakdown. You wanna draw some, sh like a really cool epic shoe. Um, just start building around it. Let's do some high tops. It really is just um, what you can come up with at that point. 
The power of unlocking anatomy and perspective together is really a super big key in being able to come up with your own stuff and being able to come up with your own style. You can get really far. You can get really, really far without knowing it. Let me get that straight to you. You can get incredibly far by never picking up anatomy and perspective. You can go really far. You can become really famous in everything. That's fantastic. But you will have limitations. And they will become very apparent when you get put up against somebody that does. So it's just really, really important to to understand how important that is. You could even simplify, once you get used to it, simplify it to that shape. It's even easier. It just becomes a little wedge and a foot. And once you start seeing things like that, <laughs> let's say we want a T-Rex. <laughs> now we have a T-Rex foot. Uh, let's say we want... What do we want? Um, like a clown shoe, maybe. Clown shoes extend a lot. That's really similar to a converse, I guess. So you can do that. Um, like I said, this could also be the shape of a hand by just giving it a thumb. So this could be very easily also be the shape that you use for hands. And it's very, very versatile of a shape if you want to learn how to do that. Okay, uh, let's, let's move on to the actual like legs in general, how about that? I have a question about getting how to be better at focusing on art and not let distractions such as video games, TV, and TikTok. See, you know, I find myself in the same situation because it's not necessarily video games that distract me or TikTok. Uh, it's drawing. I just want to draw for myself all the time. It's honestly an addiction at this point. So if I, let, let's go into normal mode for a second. Give my hand a little bit of time to rest too. Inking digitally has always been like heavy on my hand. It always has been, I, I don't understand why. Uh, it's easier than drawing traditional, but I can draw traditional for hours without it being an issue. But I can't do that with digital and I don't know why. Okay, so how not to get distracted? Well, let me give you guys a, a little tip. If you guys can see it. This is something that I have as of a couple weeks ago. And it's helped immensely with, with everything for me. Especially after getting laid off, it has been the saving grace in getting everything done that I need to progress myself in my own career. This can be applied to anything. And I believe the whole concept is uh, from the productivity journal, which I found one at a thrift shop and I just loved it. Been using one for a while now. So this is the basic concept behind it. Every day, you need to figure out one main goal that if you accomplished it, you would feel happy with your day right? One main goal to which you can dedicate a fair amount of time without distractions. Now, th this, this is the main key. You need to put your phone on silent. You can't be watching TV. You just can't. Like, I've tried it. I, I used to be able to do that when I was working for other people because I was like zoning out and droning out. But when it's my own work, I can't be doing that. So I normally just put music on 
some lo-fi, something without lyrics, something or something I can sing to. And then I just work. I dedicate a certain amount of time to that work. And I try to estimate before I start the work how long it's going to take me. And then if I go over that time and I need to do other things in the day, I put the work away after that time. And then I continue on to the next task. And then I don't con- t- I have a list of tasks right there. I don't move from task one to task two until task one is done. That simple. It's that simple. That allows me to free up mental space and I don't get anxious or worried because I know eventually that's going to get done. But the most pressing matter, the one thing that's bugging me in my mind the most is the top priority. And that's the one thing that needs to get off my plate. And if you keep on going like that, it's going to become a habit eventually. And it's going to be a lot easier for you to focus. And, you know, video games are fun video games are working fun i love them um but unfortunately they do take a lot of time and as much as i love them i love my career more so i focus on the things that are going to one be really fun for me so if my if my art was not fun for me That would not take priority over video games and cartoons and movies and stuff. Because I need an out that's fun. Since my work is fun, I don't need that. So I try to make my job as fun as possible, my projects as fun as possible, so that I don't have to rely on video games to feel entertained for the day. And yeah, that's essentially the only way that I visualize myself not playing because otherwise i'd be playing call of duty for 10 hours a day final fantasy 7 for the next you know like rest of the day and then finding like a couple hours to sleep here and there to be able to regain consciousness so i can play some more uh so yeah uh, i highly recommend that you set your priorities and then try to stick to them because it's it's tough man like this field of art it's tough and if it's competitive and if you don't focus you're not going to make it it's it's just not going to happen but so being a person that's been in this for like 20 something years please take note of this and always prioritize your art over your games uh, my keyboard's falling okay so next question lo-fi drawing for the win oh yeah okay so let's go back to drawing i think my hand's a little bit better so we're gonna move on to the actual leg and let me see how long we've been going for we've going for 48 minutes so i'm going to explain the legs and then i'm gonna let you guys go because i've noticed that these go on forever (laughs) and then you guys lose interest halfway through the video anyways so let's um make sure that these videos are a little bit shorter so you guys can actually see them okay let's see that's it okay. i'm drawing that little mark so i can see on the screen how far down i can go <laughs> um the leg the leg consists of essentially two bones your hip bone or your thigh that comes out of your hip bone kneecap and the bottom of the leg right so your calf muscle uh, bone I, t- I think it's tibia I don't know I'm not an anatomy major I just know how to draw it and then that's where the foot comes in now understanding this nor sometimes takes a little unlearning of what you've learned about my legs a lot of the times when we get taught how to draw legs they teach us to draw a box for the hips the rib cage is like somewhere up there they teach us that a box is 
the way that we should visualize hips and then legs come out from underneath. Even, let me make that smaller. Even smaller. Oh, I think I zoomed in. <laughs> I know I shifted down. Um, they normally want you to think of your legs as shapes that just come out of your the bottom of your uh, your hips. And even though you can create some fun artwork with you know seeing things like that, it's wrong. It's just essentially wrong and we get that a lot from the stick figures that we learn how to draw right we learn how to draw stick figures by drawing things similar to this yay so we visualize the box and then we visualize something coming out of the legs like that that is the thing that we need to unlearn because when we draw hips, if we draw them like boxes, we don't have a definite side to the leg. So it just becomes very awkward, especially when you're bending your legs up, down, and to the sides. So I like to visualize it like this. I normally start my bodies with a little beanbag shape. The beanbag then proceeds to get a thong. <laughs> I put underwear on my beanbag. So let's mark that with a different color so it actually stands out. Right? And then on top of that, that's indicating where my legs are going to come out that represents the hip bones of your hip and that little angle is where your uh, leg bone comes out that's where it attaches to the leg this little indicator right here is the reason that you have hips This little bump is what gives you those mega hips that you love. And then the inside of this provides the inside of where your thigh is supposed to come out. So if you have another leg right there and just draw it through, you already know where your top of your leg is and the bottom of your leg is. This is the inside into the thigh muscle. And then the other leg would be somewhere around here. Now, if you start seeing things like that a little bit more, it becomes a little bit easier when you're sketching. Because you can just map out your bean bag. Uh, let's say we want like a sideways pose, like a profile pose. We're gonna draw our bean bag for our body, rib cage and undies for now those undies are going to provide me the information that I need to draw the legs depending on where I want the legs to be going but if I want the legs to be going forward the bone goes like this it comes out and then leads forward if it's going down it's doing that if it's going back, it's doing that. So you have to take into consideration where you want your leg. In this case, maybe I want like a power pose. So I want the thigh to come out and then down. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. That's going to be our power pose. And then we just connect the thighs to the entries of our underwear. And now we have our thigh going. Now the connection 
from the knee to the bottom of the leg is very tricky and it's very easy to get wrong. But remember what we were talking about, the little joints in the ankle? That's kind of how we're going to see the top of the thigh. Uh, the top of the thigh has the bone and it goes into our the bottom of our leg, right? Let's say that's the calf. Uh, let's do this a little smaller so it can fit. Okay, okay, okay. So let's say we have our leg. Ah, Jesus. There you go. <laughs> we have our leg and we have our hip bones over here. Now you're doing like a squat or something. The way that the leg muscles connect in this little section is very tricky. The first muscles are the ones in the thigh. I like to make these like a teardrop. And I like to connect the knee joint, the knee, uh, the kneecap, with the top of the thigh. The reason is it... <laughs> doesn't really shift the knee joint doesn't really shift that much and keeping it as one organized thing on top will help you uh, visualize it a little bit easier so let's take these two let's make this even smaller then we talked about the calf muscle and the cylinder just draw the cylinder first. The cylinder will come down from the knee joint and a little bit behind the knee joint. This also has depth. So this is also a 3D object, right? It has a 3D shape to it. The calf muscle on top. And then we have our slip. Now, when you take that and you start drawing your lines on top of it, that's how it ends up looking like a leg. Ta da! And the more detail that you add with the details that I taught you, you can end up drawing a pretty good leg. Now, one key factor here, the thigh will overlap the bottom of the leg quite often, right? So this upper thigh tends to overlap the calf. And this is a very tricky part because you need to be able to show that by just showing a little overlapping line right here. But in all reality, what you're seeing is that shape. Your big shape right there into your cylinder with your calf. That is essentially what you're seeing. So if you can visualize that and just simplify it, it's going to make legs incredibly easy. You're going to be able to just sketch out two shapes into your slipper and then have those legs look really cool. Right. It ends up being a very, very simple and very dynamic way of drawing legs. If you had like a perfect splits, let's say a person's just with their hip bones right there and they were doing a perfect splits. They would still 
overlap a little bit. So the bottom part of your thigh would come up a little bit on the edges just so that your bottom of your leg could still go in there. Right, this upper thigh will always, always overlap your calf muscle. And just like that, you should be able to draw legs a little bit easier and then help use this to progress to a more deeper understanding of legs in general. Um, okay, tunes, uh, thank you for that insight. I will try to apply this to my workflow. Uh, honestly, I think that if you guys actually do that, I'm going to like be on my th like third week of doing it and I've never been more productive of my life. So I highly recommend it. And if you guys really want to see what it is like to carry a uh, production, uh, is it productivity journal? I believe if you just Google that, you'll get a bunch of different options for them as well. Uh, so highly recommend it. But anyways, I think that's going to be it for tonight. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I do have to do a little bit of self-promotion because, uh, well, it's me. Coffee Break Doodles Volume 1 is available for printed and digital copies in my store on Instagram. Go to my link and you'll actually be able to get your free activity book that I gave away to everybody because my community is amazing and they helped my brother out when he was in trouble. So I want to give all of you a free gift. So please, please go over there and purchase it. Um, not even purchase it, just get it. It's free. Just put your email. And yeah, thank you all so much for keeping me company tonight. I love you all so much. Thank you all so much. Hope you all learned a little bit. And if you did, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe, you know, do all that stuff. Watch all my videos. Love everything I do. And I will love you back. Have a wonderful night. Thank you all so much. And go watch more stuff. Bye.